Welcome back to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and it's time to finish up Rankings Day with the running backs. This should be a quick-ish one, hopefully. Just a quick uh, heads up. So earlier I released the wide receivers video. You can see that as well as the quarterbacks and the tight ends this morning. So go and check out all of the videos that you may have any questions on for Start Sit. You can always ask questions in the comments or you can come visit me on Sunday, one hour before kickoff. That'll be before the main slate. There is a 9.30 a.m. game this weekend. So set your alarms for that if you need to. You can also see my finalized rankings. These are my preliminary rankings that you are seeing right now because I just started with the ECR, the expert consensus ranking from Fantasy Pro's website, and shifted those around. This is as of yesterday. So there will be a couple of players in here that we don't know if they're playing or not that obviously changes things. And of course, uh, rankings are always fluid throughout the week, no matter what, but especially for my running backs and my wide receivers videos, these rankings will change the wide receivers the most drastically, but I haven't done my projections yet for the running backs or the wide receivers. So once I get that information, that will cause some players to shift dramatically sometimes, and of course, a bunch of little shuffling around. So you can find those rankings as of uh, Thursday will be when my first set will go up, up on the website www.theffforge.com, or once again, the final, final rankings will be up on when I am live, up on the screen over here. All around, really, because it covers pretty much the whole screen. You don't have to see my face this close up. I hope I covered everything. There is one side note as far as the difficulty rating goes for the wider, uh, no, the quarterbacks and the tight ends. Yeah, and the wide receivers. I may have gotten the San Francisco and Seattle matchup difficulties um, switched just a little bit in part. So uh, my hopefully that doesn't like drastically change anything but just a heads up that those difficulty ratings may be a little bit off and so i will get that fixed for the um, ultimate rankings that go up on the website and in case this is the first video you're seeing red it means red hot it's a good matchup white is going to be you know neutral lukewarm and the blues are going to be a cold matchup or a bad matchup let's just start off with the running backs right now i have saquon barkley as my number one running back followed by christian mccaffrey Derek Henry, Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler, Alvin Kamara, Travis Etienne Jr., Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Delvin Cook, Kenneth Walker III, and Cordero Patterson to wrap it up at number 12. And we will just be talking about some of the players who I have above the expert consensus ranking by a certain amount or below it by a certain amount, and that is a bit subjective of where I make that cutoff. But today, Tony Pollard is going to be the first one we talk about who I have four spots, Right here, you can see this ahead of the ECR because it's a positive number. I have them at ninth. ECR is 13. The Green Bay run defense has never been great, but fantasy point wise, for the most part, Green Bay's defense is just limited teams that they go up against. But as things have gotten a little bit worse there and whatever the case may be, that is shifting a little bit. And Green Bay's running defense is turning into a good fantasy matchup if Ezekiel Elliott's not playing this week, then I would have Tony Pollard up this high. I don't know if that's holding the experts back a little bit. Zeke is in these rankings, so that could be part of that reason. But yeah, he'd definitely be a good a good play. Maybe even a little bit higher is possible. Probably even ahead of Josh Jacobs, I would say, at least. Definitely a must start there. Then Cordero Patterson, who I have ranked 12th, the ECR is ranked 16th. So I'm four spots ahead of the ECR. Going up against Carolina, it's a really good matchup. He got a good amount of work last week and expect him to be into a normal, his normal workload, which still leaves room for other running backs in that system. But it's, it's enough to be very good and productive and he's done well with his opportunities. For the past couple of years so expect that to continue in this great matchup against carolina now let's move on to my rb2s starting off at number 13 with damian pierce followed by leonard fournette jamal williams deonta foreman aaron jones miles sanders david montgomery antonio gibson Najee harris devin singletary khalil herbert and raheem Mostert to wrap that up at running back 24. jamal williams is the first one we'll talk about my 15th ranked running back the ECR 18, so I have him three spots ahead of the ECR, going up against Chicago. It's a really good matchup. 
still obviously have some major concerns as to what Deontay, DeAndre Swift's usage will look like. And no matter what the case, Jamal Williams, even when DeAndre Swift gets his normal workload, which is like 40 to 50% of the work, Jamal Williams gets a lot of the other work, and he gets some of those high-producing fantasy point opportunities. The, the touchdown opportunities has been something that he's gotten a lot. i got to like Jamal Williams, regardless of De- if DeAndre Swift is playing or not. If we were to get news that DeAndre Swift's going to be playing and there's no limitations on him, Jamal Williams is still going to be fairly well-ranked and would be usable, that's for sure. Let's move on to Miles Sanders, who I don't like as much as the experts. I have him six spots behind the ECR. I have him at 18. The ECR on him is 12. Going up against Washington, and Miles Sanders gets a lot of his value is in the fact that he just... He gets you, uh, you know, up towards like 100 guards every single game. He, he has this really, really good floor. He, last year, suffered with getting touchdowns. This year, he's been able to get those touchdowns. But this Washington defense is quite stout against the run. And so I expect them to limit Miles Sanders. And this could just be, without a touchdown, a, a, a six-point game. Just There's not a lot of a ceiling. He needs to fall into the end zone this game. That could always happen, but, you know, it's a stout rushing attack. So I don't expect that to happen this week, which would not be great for Miles Sanders, most likely. Now let's move on to Devin Singletary, who I have three spots ahead of the ECR. I have him ranked 22nd. The ECR is 25. It's a not a great matchup there against Minnesota. But I do believe that Buffalo will almost surely have to rely on the run a little bit more this week. So hopefully that will result in more opportunities for Devin Singletary. It, it might not. It might be other running backs that are also getting in there more. But this should be a little bit of a different game plan this week with Josh Allen and his injury, uh, whether he plays or not. If he doesn't play, uh, maybe we're mo- a little more confident in this. I don't know how much more we move him up, maybe ahead of Anaja Harris, maybe. But we don't really know what that Buffalo team would look like without him and though Josh Allen, and uh, relying on the rushing attack. So a little bit of an unknown factor there. But all in all, I think Devin Singletary is in a pretty decent spot this week. And that brings us to my next rank, the 23rd ranked running back on my rankings here, Khalil Herbert, who is three spots ahead of the ECR. The ECR has him at 26, going up against Detroit. Just a pretty good matchup. Do fear that Detroit might be figuring things out on defense. They have some great coaching. They've uh, done this in the past with, uh, I think, a lesser defense and looked pretty darn good. So as long as that offense isn't clicking on all cylinders, then that allows this defense to stay a little bit more rested instead of, uh, you know, when that offense scores 35 points, that puts a strain on the defense too. So I like... Khalil Herbert to to have a decent game this week, potentially uh, get a touchdown is really where a lot of this value comes in of why I have him a little bit higher than the ACR. I like those odds. Which brings us to the RB3s this week, starting off at number 25 with Jeff Wilson Jr. Then DeAndre Swift all the way down here at 26th, followed by James Conner, Kareem Hunt, Deion Jackson, Tyler Algier, Brian Robinson Jr., Clyde edwards Lair. A.J. Dillon, Daryl Henderson Jr., Jarek McKinnon, and Rashad White. Uh, I don't think I have to go into too much detail about the concerns of DeAndre Swift. It is not a terrible matchup there against Chicago. So definitely keep your ears to to the news wire about DeAndre Swift and his usage this week. But if there isn't really good news about it, then I would expect something more of the same. I'm was quite shocked that he had less usage this week than two weeks ago, this past week than two weeks ago. All the more concern with his usage going forward. Then A.J. Dillon, I have ranked 33rd, which is four spots behind the ECR. The ECR in him is 29. It's not a great matchup there against Dallas. If we thought this Green Bay defense looked bad against Detroit last week, offense, just imagine what this might look like against Dallas. It could be ugly as possible i i'm not betting on it but i'm not necessarily betting on it not happening you know i'm just not betting on what's going to happen with green bay this week going up against dallas they are at home they are like the true underdogs now there are people who are putting a chip on aaron Rodgers' shoulder and if there's one shoulder that carries the biggest chip it can be aaron Rodgers. and boy is that, I mean, that's 
why he became who he became. That's what his drive has been is he's always felt like he's the underdog. Nobody wanted him. Still a first round pick, but you know, that's what his drive has been. So we'll see. We'll see. It's it's always possible that this offense could all of a sudden start clicking on the heels of Aaron Rodgers just pure will and and we know he's talented the more I hear people saying oh they should have gotten rid of Aaron before the season blah 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 the more little number amount the the, the higher the amount of people that say something like that the more I want to put Aaron Rodgers higher on my quarterback rankings and just uh, think that they're gonna do good this week so we, we shall see um could be terrible, could be, he could shut everyone up. Now let's move on to Jarek McKinnon, who I have ranked 35th, five spots behind the ECR. The ECR on him is 40, going up against Jacksonville this week. It's been a pretty good rushing matchup, and I actually think that Jarek McKinnon might be the best running back to have out of the Kansas City backfield. So with Clyde Edwards and Isaiah Pacheco doing some sort of split, Jerick McKinnon still has his full role, which is at least equal to theirs, plus it offers you a higher amount of receiving value. I might have to move him up above Clyde or Clyde down, something like that. We'll see, but it's a good matchup. So one of those running backs should do something of some value this week, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's Jerick McKinnon. Then Rashad White, I have ranked 36, which is three spots ahead of the ECR. The ECR is number 39, has him at ranked 39th. Going up against Seattle, not a great matchup, not the worst matchup on the ground. He's gotten some more usage as of late, and um, I don't know. I didn't really move him up purposefully. He just happened to, to be ahead of some others here in the rankings in the end. So let's just move on to my final grouping of the top 48 running backs according to ECR right now, which starts off with Latavius Murray at number 37, followed by Jonathan Taylor, also at number 37. Uh, Just have him highlighted here because, like all these players, there's question marks to whether he'll be playing or not, which obviously will affect, like, a Deion Jackson. It affects, obviously, his rankings. So he's not going to be the 37th-ranked running back if he plays this week. He'll be against Las Vegas. He'll probably be a top. He should be somewhere in this group of guys, uh, you know, a top back-end RB2. And I don't know that Deion Jackson quite holds that same value. Did I get this lined up? Awesome. So let's continue on at my 39th ranked running back there, Melvin Gordon, followed by Isaiah Pacheco at 40. And then 41 is Ezekiel Elliott. Now, this is the same exact story as Jonathan Taylor. Does have a better matchup there going up against Green Bay. And so I would have him be more like a uh, mid-RB2 type player, uh, probably right ahead of Miles Sanders, maybe probably... Probably ahead of Aaron Jones, so like maybe around RB17 there. And that, of course, would also affect Tony Pollard, would move him back to... I would have them pretty close to one another there, uh, both as, as playable RB2s. So that brings us to my RB42, which is, you know, Benjamin. Let's just finish out these four, uh, yeah, RB4s. Followed by Dontrell Hilliard, Caleb Huntley, Alexander Madison, Kenneth Gainwell, Naeem Hines, and Chuba Hubbard to wrap that up. Let's just uh, get through these in order. At number 42, I have Eno Benjamin. The ECR in him is 34, so I have him eight spots behind the ECR going up against the Los Angeles Rams. I expect James Conner to be into his normal role, which does leave some room for Eno Benjamin, but ultimately, I think that both of them are pretty touchdown reliant in this game, James Conner's. Probably going to be the one to get a touchdown if it were either of them. Eno does have a little bit of receiving value, but whatever the case, the Los Angeles Rams are pretty good against the run, so I don't expect that rushing attack to be that great. Uh, to have two running backs that will have any kind of good ending result. So Eno Benjamin, odd man out, out of the two. Then uh, Caleb Huntley, I have three spots ahead of the ECR. I'm at 44. The ECR and M is 47. Going up against Carolina, so I do think that there will be, let's say, six opportunities for Caleb Huntley. Going up against a worn-down Carolina defense as Cordero Patterson and Al- Tyler Algier just hit him and hit him and hit him hard, and then they get a little bit tired and Caleb Huntley comes in. Maybe he gets a touchdown. Maybe he breaks some runs. 
but it's a limited amount of opportunities, but I do expect him to do good with those limited opportunities and maybe be in there for a touchdown opportunity. So I, I just um, like him in that matchup, but it is obviously a, a bottomed out floor type of situation for him. Now let's finish this up with Chuba Hubbard, who I've ranked 48th, ECR's 48. I don't know why I went through that. Uh, Chuba, we don't know if he's going to be playing or not this week, so that's the only reason that he is ranked 48th. If he were playing, what would, do, what would we do here? Deonta Foreman maybe moves behind like Aaron Jones, maybe then in that case behind Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott, right around in that area. Similar, yeah, similar matchup strength there. So those there would be a grouping there, and then Chuba Hubbard would probably be right around ahead of James Conner maybe so yeah a high-end flex I would say is probably his likelihood there that might even be a little bit high I just don't really like James Conner he might fall down a little further um anywhere from around RB 30 to 26 ish right in that range for Chuba Hubbard so that is it for the running backs there you go again once again, all of these rankings will be up on the website on Thursday, and that will also be my projections, which will have some floors, ceilings for you, as well as an expected range, which is just like a, a normal projection, but it's a range. And that should be it for Rankings Day. Let's let you go get to your life. Thank you very much for stopping on through, and remember, you can come visit me live one hour before kickoff for any of your start-sit questions, or just ask those questions in the comments. Peace out, brothers and sisters.